Kara, great. Thanks for that introduction. And um, I guess I'll start off by saying none of us won the lottery because we're all here today. So it's a good thing that Doug didn't win the lottery because he's here to <laughs> help me present um, $1.4 billion. So we're very excited today to talk about um, uh, Safe 4.0. It's a story we've waited a long time to tell, and with the announcement uh, last week, uh, I think most of you went to skilled, uh, skilledagileframework.com, you'll see that 4.0 has been out and it's been announced. A um, little bit of background about how we got here. Um, as Karen mentioned, we work with a lot of large system builders, aerospace, defense, automotive. Um, they've been adopting Agile for quite some time. Started out in the software area and it's grown into the systems and test area. And actually now we see entire programs of hundreds of people, mechanical, electrical, et cetera, completely out there doing scrum and cross-functional, cross-discipline teams. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, we contacted Scaled, Scaled Agile, the Scaled Agile Initiative, uh, Scaled Agile Incorporated guys, SAI, about partnering with them. They're a big partner company. And we wanted to um, take the framework they had, 2.5 at the time, and extend it with some ideas and some concepts for um, the system engineering folks we have, right? Very large systems, they do requirements and design, they need to track that stuff for compliance, they have suppliers and milestones they have to accomplish. Um, their response was they offered us, hey, let's collaborate on a variant of safe for lean system engineering. That was a, a, a larger task than I think I did and I think they thought we were getting into. Um, but we, we went through that process um, earlier this year we produced a variant of SAFE for Lean System Engineering. We beta tested it twice in front of um, several large system builder audiences. And it was interesting, the consensus was <clears throat> we don't need two frameworks. The engineering folks said, we like all that Lean Agile stuff in SAFE, take these ideas that we have and make one framework out of it. And also interesting, the IT folks that build big systems, they told us everything that's in SAFE LSE we need. We do requirements and designs too. We have compliance uh, restrictions as well. So. Um, the SAI folks then, with that knowledge, took the Lean System Engineering variant we had and then integrated that with a lot of other good stuff into what we have now in Safe 40 And from my personal perspective, I think it's beautiful. It was nice seeing it on the website yesterday. I think it's really a milestone to how to describe an entire Lean Agile enterprise all the way down to add, to, add, to add an Agile team level. Um, a little bit of background, you know, we always start with what, what's the problem we're trying, to, we're trying to address. And I think most of us know these kinds of problems, right? An increasing complexity, reduce, reduction in cycle time, risk at meeting our customers' needs and market demands. Um, from that market demand perspective, you know, historically we've used things like focus groups and market surveys, um, kind of slow. Uh, if, if you think about how we try to meet customers' demands now, it's really just being able to execute extremely fast. Let's execute quickly, get something in the customer's hands, and then, and then listen to what they have to say. Um, if you look back at the original iPhone, I use this example a lot, um, you can go back and find articles if you Google it about how people thought the iPhone was, wasn't going to be a success. It didn't have Outlook integration, no copy-paste, it was single-threaded, um, but that wasn't really their goal. Their goal was to create a new experience on this kind of media device and, you know, it connected to iTunes, it had the camera, it had the cool pan and zoom, you know, you could zoom out with your fingers, really sexy. Um, and their goal wasn't to make sure it had Outlook integration or copy-paste, it was to get those high value features, get into the hands of the customers, and then listen. Do we want Alec integration? Do we want copy paste? Or do we want something that Apple never thought of? Right? And, and that's really what they do. They continue to release products. And that's, I think over the last decade, you, we've seen that, right? Let's, let's be able to execute quickly, execute fast, and get things in people's hands. So from that perspective, our products are in a continuous release cycle. Right? We want to be able to deliver value quickly, not just you know, have that short of sustainable lead time, not just because we want to monetize the value, um, but also because we want to learn, right? We want these things to be in feedback cycles to learn what's the next thing the customer wants. And it, 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 it's hard to ask people what they want until they actually have it in their hands and start playing with it. You know, it's a classic Steve Jobs approach to things. Um, another big change we've seen is that the solutions that we're offering, these features and capabilities in the system, they're crossing organizational boundaries as well as within our system and then even across across organizations. So historically, you know, we've had we've organized our systems around the structure and the architecture of the system. So features could be owned by different segments of the system. For example,